Hi, this is Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Welcome everybody and thank you for joining me. We are today going to have a retry on the crochet kit. Um, we had a little incident last time where the camera was accidentally switched off by one of the lovely pussy cats. So we did two hours of wonderful filming and no footage. So I've dutifully unpicked it, rewound the yarn, and this is the kit we're going to be working with. It is, well, it says it's a plant pot, but you can use it for whatever you want to put in it, basically. It could even be a, you know, dry rubbish bin or a desk tidy pen holder or whatever you like. Um, it's been sitting on my shelf waiting to be crafted, gathering dust, um, and now is this time. So we're going to do a, a little slightly different this time. We're going to time lapse me crocheting with a little bit of voiceover and some samples of the stitches running through so that hopefully you can get a good idea of what I'm up to. So I'll see you on the time lapse. Hi everyone. Okay, so the basket turned out not to be particularly beginner friendly. Um, as you'll see in these next couple of clips, I had to make several attempts at the base in order to, to get it right. Um, I'm not a very experienced crocheter, um, so I found it tricky to do and understand um but i got there in the end so that's the important thing and i think if you took it slow enough and methodical you would be okay with it um but because i was doing it on camera i think i was a little bit more panicky with it and a bit nervous with it so that's my excuse anyway now there will be inserts within this um, bit of footage. We will, I've worked on a shoelace to give you a better visual of the actual stitch. There you can see now I'm having another go at it. I seem to have found something that didn't look, <laughs> look quite right there. Counting the stitches. So the basic stitches within this pattern are the magic ring, which is the starting circle, half treble crochet, and a double crochet, bean stitch and chain stitch. And all of those I demonstrate um, with inserts um, using a, a shoelace that gives you a sort of a bolder image. The instructions on the box or the inside the box were very, very faintly printed. So we had difficulty getting them on screen properly. As you can see on the, the picture there, you can barely see the writing um, and the reflection. It was a little bit shiny. So that's why we've done the inserts. So I worked seven half treble crochets into the magic ring to form the beginning of the circle. I'll have a visitor. Um, and then working around the circle in various loops, I gradually increased the base size by first row increasing into every stitch all the way around, second row increasing to every other stitch, um, and so on and so forth until I was doing it every fourth stitch. And that way you don't have puckering and the, the base will sit flat. Because um, if you increase in every stitch every time, then it's gonna flop all over the place. It's not gonna look neat and tidy. The 
when we get to the sides, I will explain how I did that. And again, I'm having another go at it. I wasn't happy with that. Somehow there was a, a bit of yarn that sort of seemed to have jumped two rows and was sitting across it. So attempt number three, I believe, was the final attempt, if I can remember correctly. So we're getting somewhere now. I think we're about an hour in now, out of the three hours we were, I was sitting there trying to get it done. I'm impressed how fast I'm working here. I know it's speeded up, but even so, I think because I've done it several times, I was now familiar with what it, what needed to be done. Little's trying to help, but she wasn't that much help, so she had to be evicted again. my stitches round, make sure I've got it nice and even. I kept on running out of yarn, having to keep unwinding it from the um, cardboard there. So all told, I think that six rows on the base and I think it was seven or eight rows building up the sides. So there's not a huge lot. It's just quite a complicated stitch um, when you're a beginner. So I'm just double checking. I've got the correct amount of stitches going round and spacing it out evenly to flatten it out a little bit. Taking off on me a bit of paper. Reading the next line to see what I've got to do next time. More yarn. I did actually just about have enough yarn um, to finish it. I thought I was going to run out doing the rim, but there was just enough. So the yarn that they provide for you is a little tight so you can't afford any wastage. I did leave a very long tail so that it didn't pull through because sometimes when you leave a short tail you, you find that uh, it can pull through a little bit and it allowed me to be able to weave it in at the end a lot easier. I give myself plenty of uh, yarn there to work with on the next one round. We're nearing the end of the base now. Just trying to visually count the rows. Yeah, that, that's about maybe one more. Checking round, make sure it's all nice and neat. More yarn. Oh, that was uh, Mia, I think, running across there. So it looks like now I'm building up the base, the, the side of the the wall of the basket. No, can't be. Doesn't look big enough. See how we go. The recording of the actual making of the basket is about a week away from me actually doing the voiceover so i'm just trying to recall ah no that that's the end of the base now that's it i was just checking my what i need to do next marking it off
so here I'm going into the one outside edge only of the um, the base in order to, as I said, bring up the lip of the side. Um, those tails where the knot is um, will be trimmed off at the end and the knot just sort of sinks into the side of the basket. Um, keep it all into the inside and then you don't have them sitting on the outside and messing up your pattern but they're not so visible on the inside. I'm using a little clip as a stitch marker going round now so that I know when my um, ring is completed. Right, now I'm working in the bean stitch. Now the bean stitch is quite a complicated stitch and these are what was on the instructions. It says mini bean stitch. To create a mini bean stitch, which is shortened to MBS, insert hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull back through the stitch and yarn over again. Insert back into the stitch and yarn over again. Pull back through the stitch, yarn over and pull the yarn through all four loops on the hook. And that is one stitch which is done about a couple of hundred times working round um, the edge of the basket so once you get the swing of it it actually was quite okay but initially to try and work out the ins and outs of it literally um, was a bit of a faff and it, it took me a while um, to to get used to it shall we say and get the tension right as well because when you've got four hoops on your stitch with very thick yarn you have to be careful that they don't sort of slip off. Um, I think I'm now approaching the second row and working in between the bean stitches on the first row. And as I say, there's only about seven rows round the top, around the side. So it, it does crochet up pretty quickly once you've got the swing of it. marking my uh, my circle again to make sure I know where to finish and because at the end of each circle you have to um, do a slip stitch to join the circle to make sure it, it's nice and even otherwise it would sit wonky and you'd have a slanted pattern so now I'm working through the third row and you can, as you can see it's building up nicely This um, is not meant to be an instructional video by any means, just a bit of fun um, along the way, so to speak. And me tidying up my shelves and getting dusty boxes off and actually working on the, the projects inside them. As is my plan for this year to try and work through all the bits and pieces and get tidied and sorted and organised. So there may well be more um, videos coming up of organisational ideas and tips that we may come up with. So 
you know that that's something we're, we're planning and looking looking to do in future videos as heaven knows there is a lot to be done checking when you go in between the bean stitches there is a point of where you can put the stitch in and there's a point where you should put the stitch in so um, I was double checking to make sure as I went along that it went into the right section should I say um, because there was a couple of opportunities to to misfire on there. Um, so you have to be quite careful where the, the hook goes in and under. Make sure it's the correct stitch because if it's on the other stitch it will pull it askew again. Um, just showing you how it's worked up the side there a bit. great guns there. This is when I began to think I was going to run out of yarn um, to do the rim but we just about made it. And it'd be lovely if you could do things and then speed them all up or do things in super speed say right okay let's press the super speed button say on your nose or something and and everything sped up for a little while and then press your nose again and slow down. That would be handy to get the housework done, wouldn't it? Letting my imagination run away with me now. What else is coming up? Let me think. We might have uh, a wreath video, a mud ball video. Um, These are spoilers, but I'm not going to tell you what we do with them all. Um, I say, as I mentioned, organisational videos are um, something that we're thinking about. Um, so there's lot, lots to look forward to. Um, on the channel and also the Etsy um, is alive and well so if you fancy anything from there I shall be listing some more stuff on it in due course so there's not a huge selection on there at the moment but I'm working on that also so pop, pop and have a look and see if there's anything you fancy on there Having a good look at the pattern there. Now have I got to the, no, I don't think I've got to the rim yet. With it going such a super speed, Difficult to see how many, yeah, there's still four on the on the needle. Right, so that looks oh no, no, I thought I'd stop to show that that's the end of it there, but no, I'm still I'm still going. Oh that yes. 
I had stopped pause to so that's in so I'm now just doing the double crochet round the outside top and I'm going through both stitches this time not just the, the one edge both parts of the stitch I should say not both stitches And once I've gone round, then I'll do a slip stitch over the top of the double crochet. And then we'll have a finished article. Now we're nearly through. And I'd like to thank you for your patience if you've managed to sit all through this um, speeded up version. That's me finishing. And that's <laughs> the little bit of yarn I had left. Um, now sewing in the ends, tidying it all up. And because it's not like normal wool, you can pull it through itself. I had to be very careful how I um, push the yarn through without splitting it. So I used the back of the needle, which was blunter. And now I'm just trimming off the inside knots there. And we're fading back onto the outro. Right, I'm back now. Um, after roughly three hours and several full starts um, I have a finished article and no cats in sight this time so initially then we shut them, shut them out so that they couldn't do any damage so we have a lovely basket it's about the height it's a bit floppy but it, it will stand on its own but it's about the depth of the length of my hand and the base is probably about the size of a dinner plate coaster we have a measuring thing which is not very good but so the actual aperture is roughly eight inches and the depth is five and a half so it's a fair size now I'm thinking you could put um, I did say pens but might be a little bit floppy and a bit big for pens depending on how many pens you've got but it, it may be good for maybe storing um, cottons or small balls of wool um, or even on a stand in a hallway for putting keys and things in, gloves. So it's quite versatile or you can, as the picture suggests, put a potted plant in it. Now in our house we can't have live potted plant so we'd have to get a fake one if we were to use it and even that would probably um, come under some scrutiny with the cats um, we have had several live plants and they've ended up on the floor and uh, the cats digging in the dirt so that didn't work out too good but I digress um, today's much love goes out to my mum and dad thank you for your love and support um, I really appreciate it for the rest of you I'll see you next time bye bye